The ideas I express in the following pitch may already be in a game or a movie, and I may just not know about it. However, if they are in a game or a movie that I do know about, I simply don't feel that they live up to the potential of said ideas. Greetings, welcome to another video game pitch. I recently completed Hitman Absolution, and they did not go in all the directions that I had anticipated, so I would like to share some of those, and I'm going to start with the single player aspects, because those do seem like the most promising. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to the multiplayer. Basically, one of the big problems with Absolution is that it is so limited in the scope of the levels. And that was always something that was great about Hitman. You could just explore and, and you could take it all at your own pace. Where Absolution, for those who don't know, the levels are very small, they're entirely linear, and you basically have to sneak everywhere. There is almost nowhere that is, like, safe, where you can just be. And, real quick, I am aware that there are some alternate paths, but usually it's just... It's very linear, and the game kind of expects you to just find your way without a map, and at the same time, there is kind of not really that much of a wrong path to go, where in the other games it was very much you know where to go, but you don't know exactly how to get there. And even getting there, you still have to kill someone and hide their body and do it all properly. So yeah, what I was thinking was do a little bit of the Assassin's Creed thing. They take a lot of notes from Assassin's Creed, but not the sandbox one, and I think that is one that would work really well for Hitman. Open it up even further, and basically give us longtime fans even more freedom, even more... It would basically be Grand Theft Auto and Hitman combined to some extent. Which is already what Assassin's Creed is, to a certain extent, that and Prince of Persia. And, yeah, I would, so basically some of my ideas are that you would have ser several days to carry out the contract, and you could maybe, you know, show off, see, I did it in this little amount of time. And there would be... You know, it, it so so yeah. It should keep some kind of point system and the ability to very easily share with your friends how well you did, and it would just have a ton of different ways to kill someone and very different locations. Because again, part of the thing with Hitman is you can maybe kill your target. <sighs> you know, in a couple of different places in the one level, but if you have an entire city, well, maybe on the first day your target, let's say one of your targets is very reclusive, he, you know, he maybe, he knows he's made a lot of enemies, so he's staying inside this big mansion, and the mansion has a lot of guards, very difficult to get into. If you do want to get into it, well, you're going to have to get some kind of disguise. Maybe you take out someone who's going on some kind of errand in there, and then you can get in there. That's one option. But maybe one or two of the days he leaves to get a haircut. He leaves to go to a restaurant. And these are different, you know, you can poison the food. You can, you know, go in place of the barber and slit his throat, something. And if he does, if you do want to kill him in the mansion, you know, maybe you rent a room, you know, 100 yards away from there with a window facing the window of his, like, bedroom or something, and you get a sniper. And for the sniper, I'm even thinking you could go completely just... Again, I, I would really like to open it up, give the player a lot of freedom, and basically do the more of the role-playing game thing, where you kind of decide the direction to take it in, and 
I will admit I've not played a lot of role-playing games, but yeah, basically, do you want to be the guy that they never even see? Just one silenced shot, and by the time they get to the apartment, you've, you know, skipped town. You know, do you want the guy to die as soon as he leaves his mansion, so it's like, you know, you better stay inside or I'm gonna get you. You know, and do, do, you, do you have a signature or do you use a new method every time? And maybe if you keep using the same method, they would eventually start expecting it or like, you know, some of the la latter targets would start expecting their food to be poisoned or something, you know, would, would you know, have their windows blocked off if you keep sniping, stuff like that. Anyway, for the sniper, I'm thinking something I really liked in the first game and that they've not brought back since is you chose how much ammo to buy. And I love to play the very first level of the very first game by just one bullet for the weapon I use. One bullet, because that's enough and that saves money. And obviously I'm not really spending that money on anything else because you have plenty of money to buy weapons in the game. But if you get to buy other stuff, maybe you get like a certain budget for a mission. Maybe they, you know, maybe depending on how, how, how high profile a target it is, you get to spend more or less money or something. And again, you rent that room across from, that's gonna cost some money. And maybe you even have to bribe someone so, you know, just, you know, shove an extra hundred bucks into, you know, in, in front of the hotel clerk. You never saw me, I was never here, some, something. Maybe you have to hire a guy who goes in place of you to, you know, rent the room so they'll be looking for him instead. And maybe you then have to get that guy, you know, get rid of him, you know, I don't know kill him, have him, something, just, is. what I'm saying is, I, I love the methodical approach of every hitman but Absolution, and that's what I would like to see magnified for those of us who've, you know, been here for the entire franchise, and who didn't ask for it to be more linear, and, yeah, anyway, so, so yeah, for the sniper, you could buy just one bullet, and maybe you have to assemble the sniper rifle yourself, and if you buy it, buy all the parts from different places and have them shipped to different locations, and then you have to go around to the city, picking them up without being noticed. So, so it's more and more difficult to trace. And again, if you don't want to do all this, you don't have to, but the more you do of this stuff, the less the the less chance of you getting noticed, the less chance of people expecting you, and maybe you do want people expecting you, maybe you want to challenge yourself by just, you know, going straight for it, very, being very direct, making all kinds of, you know, the, the more of a trademark you have, the more they realize this is the same guy, this is, it's clearly one person committing all these murders, maybe you want someone to be floating a, you know, description of Hitman out there. Like, if you play Blood Money and you don't take care to not be noticed, eventually they... I, I heard one of the developers talking about how he played the game and he just shot his way through all the levels. And then the final level, he just... he started the level and immediately someone looked at a newspaper that had a picture of Hitman, looked up at Hitman and said, that's the guy! And immediately, you know, they opened fire. Bring that back. That's that's kick ass. You know, have something like that where literally, yeah, and and they could do some kind of mechanic where you can, you know, where you do have to put the sniper rifle together and you have to memorize how you put it together and then take it apart afterwards if you want to take that time, if you want to make yourself more difficult to track. You know, so maybe maybe toss them in different rivers, you know, take take a calm drive around the town and toss them in different places so they'll take forever to find. And while you're taking this calm ride, there are of course police approaching. So you gotta be really careful. 
maybe they would randomly pull some people over and say, "Hey, you're you're coming from there, you know." So so yeah, you have to be creative about how you drive away from there. Just basically make everything a challenge, make everything a potential challenge. And again, if you don't want to make a big deal out of that as as a player, you know, you've got this silent silver bowler. You know, take the policeman out, hit the gas. You know, get out of town. But they, you know, the there's probably people nearby who saw the shot, who really quickly got at least a partial what's it called plate on the car, and you know that the, the bullet from the silver bowler is you know the, the body's going to be found. They're going to look at the the bullet and the, yeah stuff like that. You know, just go real. And I think that was pretty much everything for the single player. Well, one more thing is, I think it would be good to randomize, although I realize this makes kind of the comparing score very difficult, but I've been playing a lot of Left 4 Dead, and I love the randomization in that game. It keeps me coming back over and over. And I think it would be really cool if Every so often, like, maybe suddenly the guy in the mansion gets, you know, goes out on a whim and you've spent energy sneaking in and you, you know, so, so you kind of have to, the Dark Knight, joker it up and make, make backup plans in case something, well, everything works out for the joker, but you know, what I'm saying is, yeah, just so, some kind of randomization to keep it interesting and to keep you coming back and to just to keep it challenging on replays and the like and obviously it shouldn't be a huge amount because Left 4 Dead is a very different game from Hitman. Left 4 Dead is you know shooting constantly there's and Hitman is very much about avoiding shooting so it should be stuff that you could, you know, get out of without too much. It should maybe just... Maybe if the game notices that you're trying to make sure that everything will go off without a hitch, and you've planned it down to the last... It, you've planned for, well, I have 30 seconds here to, you know, to, to get to this place and suddenly someone delays you by 20 seconds or something, you know, so unexpectedly the servant comes out for a drink just as you were going through that area and you have to hide until the servant has, you know, had one or two glasses and then he passes out and then you can pass him or something. And it doesn't necessarily ruin it, it just adds some more tension, it adds an element of the unexpected because I think that's also part of what they were trying to do with that solution. Because I get that having a plan all the time, yeah, and so basically that covers it for single player. Now I've racked my brain trying to think of a way to do this game in multiplayer, to do Hitman in multiplayer without it losing its identity. First of all, I am immediately discounting it basically being the Assassin's Creed multiplayer, in part because Assassin's Creed is doing that really well. I don't see a reason to really try to do that. You know, it, it would just be the the ripoff. It would be the 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 one that came after and trying to copy the other one. This is not like when you know. Let me think. Well, when. In the early days of like first-person shooters, several of them tried to do very different things. You know, I'd, I'd say Wolfenstein 3D is at least the first really big first-person shooter, and that's kind of very stealthy and it's 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 dark in the kind of in in the way that it's too maybe depress you kind of. It's it's very claustrophobic and very you know, every everything looks the same. And then, then Doom comes along. And it's also a very very dark game, but it's kind of for the 
it's it's for the person who sits down to watch a horror movie to watch gore you know it's it's not to scare you or depress you it's to have you you know enjoying blowing apart giant spiders and yeah various you know they're demons and then Duke Nukem 3D comes along and then it's like aliens and then it goes for this you know kind of raunchy humor and so so they're kind of doing different things because there's not a huge change as far as the overall you know if you, if you just boil it down if you don't take style or approach into account it's basically you're walking around shooting people with an assortment of guns that's it you know and, and we and early and it's early 3d games so but when you take the style and approach into account they're very different games and i don't think that there would really be something that interesting of a different take on the Assassin's Creed multiplayer to do with Hitman. The other thing, oh, to do in general. The other thing is, it fits for Assassin's Creed because Assassin's Creed, it didn't even have guns at first. You know, the, the you, you, you kind of, you get the hidden gun in Assassin's Creed 2, and at that point, it's not even very easy to use. It gets easier to use as it goes, but, Assassin's Creed is very much about the short-range kills and kind of hiding... Yeah, yeah, basically hiding in plain sight where, where it's kind of... It's, it's not because he's disguising himself, it's because he's acting like nothing's wrong. And where Hitman is more the kind of thing where he disguises himself and that's why he gets to go where he needs to go to get some, yeah, to, to kill someone. And you do, of course, have that really badass scenario of walking away without someone having, you know, with, with no one realizing that you're the one. But it, it is just different in that way. And the, the combination of guns and disguises, I think, would really make it just make less sense to do with Hitman. So basically, keeping in mind that I'm trying to maintain some kind of level of action, because it's, you know, you, you see immediately, you know, when you, when you go from playing an Assassin's Creed game in single player to multiplayer, multiplayer is far more tense. You can actually die. It barely happens at all in single player. But in multiplayer, you know, you're actually up against other people and they can actually kill very easily. And so, and, and also one, one aspect that makes Hitman in multiplayer very difficult is that it's very much about the consequences of getting caught, of getting spotted, where people will very much, guards will be after you, the moment that you've been spotted. Whereas in Assassin's Creed, there are these patrols, and as long as you kill the patrol that noticed you, and then, you know, leave the area, then that's it. You know, where in Hitman, you might have to find another disguise. Well, in the last couple, he, you can contain the situation, but still, it's very much about not getting caught. Whereas Assassin's Creed, it's not really about not getting caught, it's just about containing the situation. You know, it always has been about containing the situation. You don't have to worry. And, like, civilians, don't even worry about it. They never tattle on you. I don't know why. Tell on you. Why? I don't know why. Went kindergarten with my vocabulary there. And that's why a multiplayer you know, both single player and multiplayer, just make sure, you know, sure you can run, you can move on a rooftop, just make sure you're ready for whoever spots you. And so, so yes, my idea would basically be that it's either one player who's the killer, the, the 47, or, and, and then some, some players on 
t team together trying to get him or it should be some kind of co-op versus co-op where it's maybe four people one 47 and one like techie helping 47 communication would be key but it typically isn't co-op and then one agent on the ground haunting 47 trying to keep the guy alive the, the target alive or one and then one techie helping him I, I basically don't think that it would really work the moment that you start fighting each other. The way Assassin's Creed solves this is that you instantly kill or stun your opponent. There is no battle. There might be a chase, but there is no battle. And again, a chase in Hitman means witnesses. So none of that. And the moment you're starting to fight each other, the moment you're shooting at each other, it's just a typical shooter. And why are you playing Hitman just to shoot at each other. Why not play some other online game where you can actually shoot at each other all the time, you know? So, yeah. I don't think actually having them shoot at each other would be that interesting. And I know right there, I've lost a lot of the potential audience. Like I said, it wouldn't be easy. I don't think it's a, an accident that there hasn't been multiplayer for Hitman yet. I mean, when you when you think about it, the the Splinter Cell franchise. I think that had multiplayer even in the second game. I don't think the first one had, but I think the second one had. And the second one's from like two thousand four. So was Hitman Contracts. You know, they've done three games since two thousand and four, or one of them in two thousand four, and they still haven't done multiplayer. You know, I think actually every Splinter Cell since has some kind of multiplayer. What's it called? Double Agent on the Wii only has co-op, but that's also, you know, that's still a, a form of multiplayer, and it kicks ass, by the way. Anyway, so yeah, basically it would be that the two techies are watching surveillance cameras and telling 47 and the agent on the ground, respectively, you know, take take the path to the left, for example, because again, we want to keep it fast, we want to keep it tense, so no, not much of a map, at least, not, not really a map that you take time to look at, because there are other players, and the other players, you got to keep it moving. Yes, one of, one of the big difficulties with maintaining Hitman's identity and making it an interesting multiplayer game. So basically, the, you know, 47 and the agent on the ground can look at a map, but it's not really, they're not really supposed to look at it for long, and it doesn't show if there are people, and yeah, like I said, it's up to the techie of either to really quickly be searching for the, the safest way to the target, in the case of 47, and the, yeah, actually 47 in the case of the What's it called? The, the, yeah, the techie on the side of the, the FBI techie, let's go with that. And the FBI agent, he has to go around and try to spot 47. And again, the part of the thing here would be that basically 47 can hide in... You know, he can, he can pretend to be part of crowd. Let's say there's, um, in Blood Money, there's a level where you're basically, there's a tour going on of the area and you can, you know, say there's a tour going on so he can pretend to be part of the tour and I know this takes it closer to Assassin's Creed but again it can only go so far. The moment 47 is completely by himself and just sneaking around you know, in multiplayer it makes him very obvious the moment someone spots him and if there isn't someone checking cameras or the like, I don't think there's that much... It, it just... I don't know, I, I don't quite know how else it would work really well, but you're free to come, you know, supply suggestions, of course. Anyway, the 
part of it is, of course, that if 47 does really have, you know, the, the tattoo and the, the talent suit, that makes him very distinctive. So, before the match starts, the player taking on the role plus 47 would get to choose an appearance from pretty much anything. I don't even think it should be limited, you know, by gender, age, ethnicity, anything. He just... He's an, he's an assassin, and he could come from any background, he could be any age. And he can customize the appearance somewhat. And it is up to the agent to see through the disguise. And again, the moment that he's seen through the disguise, the assassination can no longer take place. If nothing else, the techie, even if the, even if the 47 killed the the FBI agent, the FBI techie, could call for reinforcements, they'd have the building locked off, and again, the point is to kill and get away unseen for the 47. So, if he does manage to get the right person, it, it actually is, you know, the FBI agent wins. And the only way the 47 can win is to get, get in, kill the target, and get back out. And maybe the kill the target. I don't think there should be a lot of different ways to kill the target necessarily. And certainly they should be, to, to make it possible for the 47, there should be some kind of, maybe the FBI agent cannot be in the same room as the target. Maybe the target, yeah, you could make up some excuse for that. So the 47 can get unseen in there and the, four, and the FBI agent, there will be more than one path in there, but let's say the 47 does have to get all the way in there, at least fairly close. So maybe he can poison the food before going in to, you know, so he doesn't actually have to go into the target. But then the FBI agent knows, well, the kitchen is one possible area that could be, so yeah. And basically, the FBI agent should have a limited capability. Let's say he does want to check out someone. He, he thinks he knows who the 47 is. So he has him searched. That's going to take a while. Maybe it takes a full minute, maybe two. And yeah, so, so basically if he, you know, bets on that, then, and, and you know, it, it could be where the, the, he can ask the techie, do we really think it's this guy? Because it's, you know, and again, he can only, he can't stop more than one person at a time. That would be part of it. Again, to just not make it too freaking difficult. Because if he can stop an entire group and 47 is part of that group, then obviously that makes it, uh, yeah. So he would have to say, you from that group, you know, get over here, I'm going to search you. And if that's not 47, then 47 has a little bit of time where he can't be spotted. And that could give a little bit of, you know, that could also make him more courageous. Maybe there should be extra points for the more creative he gets with his kill or something. And I think disguises for the 47 is obviously very difficult to deal with. Because again, if he's going to like poison someone's food, he might, you know, it might be best for him to be, like, you know, dress up as a chef or something. But the techie could very easily discover this, so I don't know. Yeah, actually, maybe there shouldn't be that many ways to kill the target. Maybe it's just, can he get close enough to the target to kill him? And if he can, and then get back out, you know. And maybe he shouldn't even have to, like, hide the body. Just the moment the guy's dead, he just has to get back out. And still, the FBI agent can only stop one person, so it's very much, it's extremely tense for both of them, because they have to, the FBI agent can only stop one person at a time, and the, and meanwhile the 47 has to watch every move to not stand out. And he has to approach it at a very slow pace. And of course, there should be some kind of time limit. I don't know, five minutes, ten minutes maybe, total. So that the 47 can't just take it extremely slow and make it impossible. He has to move at the same time. 
and I don't know if maybe there could also be for the for the two techies if they should also be able to look further. Maybe there will be times where they can't really make much use of looking at cameras. Maybe the 47 techie can be looking at, well, what would be the safest way to get, you know, he could be looking at floor plans like they do in the Matrix, you know. Maybe the FBI techie could be running, what's it called, he could be running background checks on the people who made it in. And, you know, if, yeah, if the techie is fairly sure that it's this one person and the FBI agent, remembering, the FBI agent is entirely on foot. Let's say that 47 is on the first floor, FBI agent is on the third floor. Maybe the techie could be the one to check the 47's identity. And again, that would mean that he has lost. And, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I don't think that there's really any kind of... That, that's what I have as far as ideas. I did consider several assassins working against each other, but I don't think that, like, trying to get to the target first, but again, then you have the question, why, why don't they shoot each other? And then you're back to a regular kind of shooting. I'm not saying that it wouldn't be, it, it could maybe be fun to have a game where, but I just don't think it would really be that much Hitman. Maybe there could be a mode of multiplayer where just, you know, they're trying to shoot each other and they don't know exactly where the other is and they don't, they only have to, you know, they, they just have to try to figure out where the other person is and then shoot them. And, yeah, something like that. But, and, and I did also consider several assassins in the same on the same side, in the same match. Maybe like a team of FBI agents and a team of assassins. But again, if we're talking about not having them, having the two teams try to kill each other, because again, that's kind of... I think there's actually one of the Splinter Cell games has like, where one team is, immers one team is mercenaries who have to try to stop the team of Splinter Cell operatives, and basically the mercenaries are your average goon with an AK-47, and the Splinter Cell operatives have the Splinter Cell gadgets to use. And again, I don't really think that 47 should necessarily be copying that, because that also just makes more sense with Splinter Cell. It... yeah, so... Because Splinter Cell is very much about the gadgets, whereas 47 is very much about the disguises, and remaining secret. Splinter Cell has much more killing than Hitman when it's ideal. I, I realize that there's a lot of killing in the first Hitman game, but they were finding their bearings, you know. And from there on out, playing ideally means only killing the target. Now, the... Yes, the, the, the further problems with having a team of Hitmen and a team of FBI agents, the team of Hitmen Unless they, like, have a target each to sneak up on, I don't really know that there'd be enough to do for them. You know, what What exactly do, do they approach from different sides? Does one of them get into the building and lock the others, you know, open the door for the others? And again, then where do you go from there? What What would they have to do from there? You know, does, does one of them distract guards? And then the other, yeah, I just don't think there'd be enough for everyone to do. So yeah, that covers them. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.